Hey guys, it's Steve Frain. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to use the cold backup and recovery processes in Oracle XC. Uh, the theory behind cold backup is basically it is something we do when the database has stopped running. The database is not active, no users are connected to it, and the so called instance, the background processes and memory structures of the database, those are shut down and not working at all. And what we do in a cold backup is we take a copy of the data files, which are not active, hence the term cold. We copy them off to a separate location. And then if there is some sort of failure where we lose data, we simply restore from that cold backup. The drawback of a so-called cold backup is that we will lose any data from the time of the backup, as you might expect. So we're going to walk through today a little bit of a scenario of how we'd go about doing that. Essentially what we're going to do is, I showed you the Oracle XE file structure before, and in this C Oracle XE or a data XE folder, you see most of the table spaces, most of the data files that are associated with this particular database. What cold backup is going to do is going to take copies of these and any other table spaces we might define and shove them over to what's called a backup set. The online redo logs, something we've looked at in the recovery area before, these archive logs here, and the online logs, something we've looked at in previous videos, they're not part of a cold backup at all. There are no transaction files applied during a cold backup. We're just taking a straight copy of the data files and putting those back in place. So I'm going to walk through the scenarios right now. To do a cold backup using the menu options in Oracle XC, if you go here, to your Oracle XC menu, you're going to see there's Backup Database and Restore Database, and those are the two menu options we're going to be interested in today. But to do a so-called cold backup, your Oracle XC database has to can't be running in what's called archive log mode. It's something we've covered in the past, but it's basically um, copies versions of your transaction files and puts them off to a separate spot so that they can be ret retained for a long time and retrieved later. I'm going to make sure that this particular database is not in archive log mode. So I'm going to connect the system user in the so-called sysdba role. And I'm going to just enter the password I used for administrative things when I installed Oracle XC. And now I am connected. And I'm going to check to see if I am running in archive log mode. So I'm going to run a command called archive log list, which shows me at the top I am in no archive mode. It also says automatic archival is disabled. So here you can tell I, I am not currently archiving my logs. You can also do select log underscore mode from the dollar database. And you can also see that the database is currently in what's called no archive log mode. So I am in the mode I want to be in uh, if I were trying to do a cold backup. Let's just say hypothetically I were not. What would I do? I would shut down the database, shut down immediate. That's going to take a moment or two to come down. There we go. And I would start up in the mount phase. Again, this is creating the, the Oracle instance, the memory structures, the background processes, jumping on top of the data files, but not opening them yet. And here I would do alter database. Oops, messed up there. Now that would put it in archive log mode. I want to put it in no archive log mode. It was already there. Again, I'm just demonstrating how to do this. Alter database, no archive log, database is altered. So if your database does not happen to be running, if it is running in archive log mode, you can disable that by shutting the database down, starting up in the to the so-called mount stage and running alter database no archive log. Okay. So let's do an alter database open to get this open here. There we go. My database is now open. I'm going to do some things. I'm going to create a table space and I'm going to create it on a removable disk I have out here. Uh, what we're going to do on this removable disk, the reason I'm doing this is when I create the table space out here on this removable disk, I'm going to be able to yank the disk out to simulate a media failure. 
and then we'll have a need to actually run through our, our recovery processes when the time comes. So I'm going to go through the command of creating this table space. I'm going to create a table space called going to lose it because I'm going to lose it. And I'm going to put it out there on that E drive, which is again my removable disk drive. Paste it in here. My table space is going to be created in a moment, hopefully. Taking some time because it's writing to the external flash drive. My table space has been created. I switch over here, and there it is. Clonalusa.dvf has been created by Oracle, and now my table space is in place. Now I'm actually going to go and create a table. Creating a table called Cold Backup Test. Just has a single dummy column in there. All I'm going to do is run some trivial commands to insert uh, data into it. Table is now created. I'm going to do something called set auto commit on. You've probably encountered this before with SQL plus or similar command line tools, but the basic idea here is I won't have to use the commit statement after I change data if I set auto commit on. This data will be, these changes will be quote unquote committed or made permanent automatically for me. So I won't constantly have to uh, keep typing the commit command after I make a change. I'm going to put a couple of records in there. In cold backup test, I will put these two guys here. And you can see the commit complete message came up. Now both of these changes are committed to the database and the changes are made permanent. Okay, just a test. I'm going to do select star from cold backup test. Prove that there's some data in there. And boom, the two records I put in there, A and B, are in that dummy column. All right, so what would I do now? I'm going to go take a cold backup of my database. To do this, menu. And the command says backup database. That sounds like a pretty good one to use. Now, you're going to see a warning come up. Since you guys saw before I turned off log archiving, I was in no archive log mode. Since that mode is disabled, it's basically saying if you restore the database between this backup and any transactions that take afterward, they're going to be lost. Archive log mode, which is something that would allow us to have kind of a continuously operative database and preserve all our transactions, there wouldn't be any issue of losing things in between backups if we administer it correctly. That's the recommended mode in which you want to run Oracle. But if I salute, check this backup database script, if I execute it when um, I'm in no archive log mode, as I am now, I'll get this particular warning, and it's telling me I'm going to shut down uh, the database, take a backup, and then restart it. When it does this, users will not be able to access the database. I'm effectively taking the database down. Users who will be kicked out will no longer, it will no longer be available to them. The backup will be taken uh, while the database again is so-called cold. There's not going to be any changes going on at that time. Say I'm sure, it takes the backup. See it runs through a bunch of scripts. You can watch those go by on the screen, but it's basically writing a lot of code for you. You can see inf information about file system stores. It seems to be reading files from disk. It's doing configurations, etc. Shutting the database down. Now the Oracle instance has gone to sleep. It's going to just burn through some scripts for a while. It's invoking a tool called RMAN, Recovery Manager, to actually take the backup. You can see the list of table spaces there that are being backed up. And you can see my gonna lose it table space now is at the bottom there. Backup set complete, etc. etc. Looks like things are successful. It says recovery manager complete. Backup of the database succeeded. And it tells me where log files generated. So I hit this. And what's actually going on in the file system here? Let's hunt around a bit. I can go to here to the so-called flash recovery area. 
and I can go into my backup sets. You can see already I have something created for today's date. I happen to be making this video on July 7th. And I created a backup set earlier today to test out some of these things on this particular machine. So you can see these three files have been created just now, and they're slightly larger than the set of three I created earlier. Uh, again, these were just taken at 448. That's the time it was on my system clock a minute ago. The backup, the cold backup, Oracle just created, went into a so-called backup set, and that is located here. Let's see what the database state is right now. Just trying to issue any trivial statement. Oh, Oracle has been shut down. Let's see if it's so the database has actually been brought back up. I can connect to it. Now I'm going to do something interesting and awful. I'm going to pull out the stick that keeps my removable drive on it. I'm pulling it out, and it's gone. You see that it just went away. So I'm going to shut down the database. Now it notices there's something wrong here. Can't find the file specified. I was trying to write the data that I just had to disk, and it sees that I've lost things now. Can't do anything for me. What's going on here? It won't shut down? Hmm. Database won't shut down for me. How can I take it down? I can use it. Well, let's just check one more thing. See, I'm still able to interact with the rest of the database. So I'm going to do something called shutdown abort. This means Oracle, I'm forcing you to come down one way or another, even though you're balking at me because you have errors. I run a shutdown abort, and the Oracle instance is shut down. Next, I'm going to show you the process of restoring the backup and bringing the database back up. Let's see what would happen if we try to do a startup now, just for yucks. and the database will not be open. Let's I go back here. I tell Oracle, hey, I want to restore my database. I'm going to shut down and restore the database. I'm going to put my media back here. You guys can see it's running through a script there, and I have in fact returned my removable disk here, back to my restore database script, started things up, and you can see that it's restoring all these data files from the backup set. Now for extra thoroughness I could have showed you here for example my physically deleting the gonna lose it .dvf file from the, the memory stick here but before I actually reinserted it so that you could see that it was gone. But recovery manager is complete. Press any key to continue. Let's go look at what's on the removable disk. And you see there that that was just, this file was modified at 4.54 p.m., my current system clock time. It put it back. This is not the file I had originally. This is the file that kind of came back from the backup set. If you look at the rest of the things in here, you'll see that oh, all the other table spaces came back from the backup set too. So Oracle has done the restore for me. I'm going to close SQL Plus and come back into it. There we go. I'm connected again. I'm going to do a select star from cold backup test. Ah, and only A and B are there. Remember at one point I added additional records C, D, etc. But I took my cold backup at the time where only A and B had added. So when I do the restore from the cold backup, any subsequent transactions would have been lost and you get the state of the data as it was at the time the cold backup was taken. Alright folks, that was a quick demonstration of cold backup and recovery in Oracle. And in a subsequent video we're going to look at the hot backup and recovery, which is a little bit of a different animal. Thanks very much for your time.